Hi, I'm Doug with Travels and Travails. Today we're going to show you how to install the Stromberg Carlson trailer tray on the front of our 2013 Casita Independence. Installation of the Stromberg Carlson trailer tray is very simple and straightforward. Uh, it just requires basic hand tools, sockets and wrenches. And since the components are made in China, it does require metric wrenches and sockets. But sizes are close enough where an SAE socket wrench set would probably work. One of the other tools you'll need is a drill. Installation of the trailer tray requires that you move the hard propane tank cover that comes with your Casita trailer as it will no longer be able to be re removed or installed with the tray in place. Once you install the tray, you will not be able to access the LP tanks with the cover left on. The manufacturer recommends either removing the tank cover permanently, installing a soft vinyl cover, or installing a hard plastic cover with an opening to remove the tanks. We chose to leave the cover off. In case you've never removed the hard plastic cover on your propane tanks on your Casita trailer, there is a bungee strap on the underside that you have to remove in order to slide the cover off. Clamp the lower support mount to the A-frame of the trailer using the lower mount. Using the two holes nearest the outside of your A-frame, attach loosely to allow for adjustment. Attach the trailer plates to the sides of the trailer tray using the hardware. In order to accommodate the nuts on the Anderson hitch, we had to raise the lower pocket mounting location. Okay, the problem I ran into with this installation is that the frame brackets will interfere with the Anderson hitch because if you put it the way it's intended to go, it's going to make this nut no longer accessible for adjusting the tension on the hitch, which you have to do every time you hook up the car. So this is the normal direction that it's intended to mount to the frame. It has a lip right here on the bottom so it's not possible to put this on upside down. The inside frame bracket though, however, it doesn't matter which direction, so it can be reversed. So this is the normal orientation out of the box. We're going to reverse it, so we'll know the location of the added hole we have to make. So in adding this, extra hole at the bottom of each leg of the bracket. Start with a pilot hole, a smaller bit, and then work your way up to 3 8 for the final size. And that applies to whether you're using a drill press or a hand drill. Since we raised the lower bracket up, it's going to require cutting four inches off the top of this leg. Whenever I'm cutting something like this, I like to use some masking tape where the cut is. That way it doesn't damage the painted surface. For our installation, we left three holes exposed on the rear of the plate.
Okay, this step, I want to make sure this shelf is as level as possible, which level to the trailer, not the ground. So I did level the trailer, so this bubble level is the same as the floor of the trailer. It seems a little cumbersome, the height of the tray, trying to get the generator on and off is a little heavy. Um, also, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to put gas in it. So one of the things we noticed this being so high, I think it's because it's made to also make clearance for the taller propane tanks used on some trailers. These are the five gallon tanks and some trailers are equipped with the seven and a half gallon tanks, which are quite a bit taller. This easily supports the weight of the generator. The height for getting it on and off is a little bit uncomfortable. I'm 5'9", and it's still almost need a ladder to comfortably get it on and off. Also, it seems like it'd be a little cumbersome to fill the gas at this height. So I think we're going to see what it takes to lower it down, maybe another four inches. Um, you do have to drill. The legs don't have any holes in them yet, but there is a hole in the outer bracket as a guide. So once I got everything in position, I tightened the set screw on the side to hold everything in place and I removed the leg and the brackets so I could get in there with a the drill and drill all the way through for this bolt at the top and the bottom. That's the set screw. Okay. The tray's in position at a comfortable height. I lowered it six inches from the standard height, which I came up with the six inches because that's the difference between a 30 gallon propane tank and a 20. So what I did was um, I cut this leg down on both ends, only cut four inches off of the bottom, and that's to compensate for the raise in the bracket. And then I cut six inches off of the top. That's really important to not cut more than four inches off of the bottom or it binds in the bracket. Doug also removed six inches off the top of the lower support mount to accommodate our lower propane tanks. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Check out our next video to follow the adventure.